The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, folks. We're just waiting for the last-minute group of folks uh, that are logging in. We'll be getting started in about 90 seconds. We appreciate your patience. Thank you. Well, hello everyone. I would like to welcome all of you to today's online program here at the IBF. My name is Anish Jan, your host and moderator for today's complimentary webinar. If you don't already know, I speak to you from just outside of New York City, USA. Firstly, being that we're based in the States, I want to extend our heartfelt condolences to the city of Orlando and the families that have lost their loved ones a little more than a week ago. Unfortunately, this is still raw for many, including myself. IBF is in Orlando every year. Of course, here at the IBF, we talk a lot about unplanned demand, outliers, unexpected events in our SNOP processes, but I hope we never have to consider this type of tragic, unplanned event ever in the future. Again, it's what I hope. Well, uh, well, on a lighter note, folks, as always, we have a great global group of companies registered for today's webinar. Nearly 1,000 people registered, and they continue to sign on. Of course, SNOP continues to be a hot topic in our space in terms of getting it started as well as maintaining a successful monthly cycle, SNOP cycle, the topic for today's webinar. Certainly, it can be said the SNOP, SNOP process is regarded as the greatest innovation for managing demand. Plus, the IBF is also just coming off its Apex and IBF Best of the Best SNOP conference in Chicago, which is the biggest SNOP conference in the world. If you were there, you were one of the lucky ones. If you were not and never attended, IBF has many other opportunities to interact with SNOP thought leaders and SNOP professionals for the rest of the year. Therefore, check our IBF.org website for details. But I was just there in Chicago for the conference, and it was an incredible experience. I have to say I've been at IBF for over 20 years and I continue to learn every time I attend a conference. As businesses evolve, we have to learn how to improve traditional approaches to match today's needs. And this is what many learned at the conference. This is what IBF provides. And this is what our webinar leader, Todd Dunn, will touch upon during today's program too. Now before I introduce Todd, I must briefly share a little bit about us, especially for those of you that are new to IBF. IBF's mission is to foster the growth of demand planning, forecasting, SNOP, and the careers of those in the field. We're recognized worldwide as providers of demand planning, forecasting, analytics, SNOP education, benchmarking re research, corporate training, yes, we come to you on site, and certification. Our certification designations are CPF, Certified Professional Forecaster, in the advanced version of CPF. We've been doing this for well over 30 years now. Pretty much every Fortune 500 company has a CPF as part of their staff. We at the IBF are also known for our body of knowledge in the space of demand planning, forecasting, as well as SNOP. This drives everything we do in terms of training, research, our publication, the Journal of Business Forecasting, global conferences, workshops, as well as certification. Furthermore, the IBF wants to build credibility for the field within organizations and further legitimize the discipline. 
And so you know, folks, from the early stages of the IBF organization and today, we have many journal articles and research reports on SNOP. This includes data that proves the benefits of SNOP in terms of improved forecast accuracy, inventories, inventory turns, and customer service. All active IBF members have access to this research. Therefore, if you're interested in becoming a member, please contact us for more information. You can also contact us to receive free previews of these articles and research reports as well. So today we're excited to offer you our live webinar titled SNOP, Tools and Techniques to Create a Sustainable and Successful Monthly Cycle, presented by Todd Dunn, Director of Supply Chain with AccuCaps. A little bit about Todd Dunn. Todd has held several management positions in supply chain and production within his 25 years of manufacturing experience. He has facilitated the pre-SNOP and executive SNOP meetings for over 15 years. He holds a BS degree in business management and obtained the Michigan certificate from the Raw School of Business at the University of Michigan. He has been a speaker at several supply chain and demand planning events across North America over the past eight years covering topics related to demand management and SNOP. Todd is an IBF Knowledge Committee member and IBF Certified Professional Forecaster too. Todd also teaches SNOP at the IBF's online education training programs. He will also be teaching at the IBF Academy for Business Planning, Forecasting, and SNOP that's taking, pay, taking place in Las Vegas, August 15th and 16th. That's your opportunity to meet us in person. Now, before I introduce Todd, I just have a few reminders for today's webinar, which are no different from previous IBF webinars. We request that all of you ask your questions in the questions box located at the bottom right of the GoToMeeting pa panel. Q&A is a big part of our live webinar, so this is highly encouraged. So you can do this at any time from start to middle to towards the end when we actually get into the Q&A. Uh, and then at the conclusion of the presentation, we'll then open it up for Q&A and do the best we can to address all these questions. Finally, there will be a short evaluation survey that you'll receive via email an hour after the uh, webinar concludes. Uh, this is an opportunity to share your feedback. This is really important. And of course, doing that will uh, allow you to uh, get access to the slides from the webinar. So you can uh, input your interest in receiving the slides in the survey, and that's the only way to, to get that. So keep that in mind um, if you would like the material. Well, without further ado, ado, at this time, I want to introduce Todd Dunn. Todd, take it away. Thank you, Anish. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, as Anish mentioned, I'm the Director of Supply Chain. Just uh, for your uh, information, uh, AccuCaps manufactures pharmaceutical, nutritional, and cosmetic products, uh, soft gelatins. Uh, we have existing products, a lot of new product launches, and uh, basically from the uh, development of the product to raw materials to final package SKUs into the uh, retail market globally. So uh, just a broad, a little bit of an overview there. So as Anish uh, mentioned, uh, my, my experience uh, with SNOP over 15 years, I've been the facilitator for the pre-SNOP and executive SNOPs. And funny, doing the math uh, the other day, that's, that's approximately 200 executive uh, SNOP meetings that I've, I've facilitated. So a lot of uh, interesting uh, memories, but uh, good memories. Um, I'm very passionate about SNOP. You know, even today, as I was in the very beginning, um, I, I recognize the value and, and how it really drives the business forward, and, and the impact that it can make. You know, our I'm fortunate our, our executive team recognizes this as well. Um, this was not always the case, and as I walk through, I'll I'll talk you through uh, how how I address that. Uh, you know, some things worked well, some did not. But today, I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you uh, what uh, what, is, what has worked. Um, so with that, I'll provide some examples of tools and methods that I've found, found to be successful. Um, you know, and my experience uh, will be, I'll call it from the boardroom, when uh, many discussions can be very uncomfortable. Um, you know, many of you have likely experienced that in one way or another. Um, you know, my hope is that you can take away some ideas that will help you improve your SNOP process. And, uh, you know, this is a sample of the material that I will cover uh, at the IBF Academy in August in, in Las Vegas. So if you are there, uh, please stop by, say hello, and uh, let's let's talk about uh, your process. I, I, 
I'm always open to uh, discussions with people uh, on how theirs is going. You know, I always feel there's an opportunity to improve. Um, we've made a lot of improvements in ours, but again, I'm always looking to improve even more. With that, just some of the topics that I'm going to cover today. So the first section will be just a brief uh, overview of SNOP and the, and the critical elements of the SNOP process uh, that's working to help drive the business to meet its strategy and business plan. Um, I'll next cover off what we use. Um, we've evolved to from a monthly timeline and horizon perspective uh, that I would recommend and, and the reasons for this direction. You know, of course, many companies will follow a different process based on their type of business, but I'll cover what I've seen work, uh, not just for my own company, but I know other companies that have, have followed this, uh, this uh, recommendation uh, really to achieve a sustainable overall SNOP process. I'll cover the importance of and process of developing the key actions and recommendations that are brought forward uh, to the executive SNOP meeting, uh, where you're ultimately you're gaining alignment and, and really wanting the, uh, the decision. Uh, the next two agenda items are are related to you know what's it. This this is always a challenge, and and even over the years, um, you know the tools I'm going to show you. I've, I'll call it my toolbox. I, I pull these things out as I need to, where we have a gap in creating uh, accountability for, and I'm, I'm not just talking about the executive SNOP meeting, I'm actually talking about the entire process. So um, all of the meetings and even the pre-meetings in, in that regard. And as well, you know, how do you gain, you know, this, I hear this a lot, how do you gain alignment? And, and so that people um, see the value in SNOP and, and they're there because they want to be and they, they get it. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and like I said, I'll be the first to admit there's always an opportunity for improvement. Um, and it, it, from time to time, it can be a challenge, but uh, it's important to keep everyone involved on task and focused on the inputs and outputs. So but we'll, uh, we'll talk through that. And then lastly, uh, we'll, uh, we'll leave some time at the end for, for some questions. So first, I uh, want to provide a brief overview of the SNOP process um, that, uh, that I've implemented. So this, this uh, grid here, you know, sales and operations planning, or SNOP, when it's used to its fullest capability, can be the forum that drives the business. Um, really, it's the central link uh, between the, you know, the long-term uh, strategic plan and business plan to the, the master schedule that drives the, you know, the, that drives the manufacturing or the operations group. You know, as part of a fully functioning SNOP process, you know, the demand for the products and services that a company provides is balanced with the capacity in which the organization can demonstrate uh, to manufacture these goods or provide these services. Um, you can see the many elements that are linked to the SNOP process where decisions uh, need to be made to help ensure that the business is aligned and the anticipated uh, sales, financial, production, and inventory plan can be achieved. So in terms of the monthly SNOP cycle, we follow a five-step uh, process. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on each of these steps uh, in this webinar since I'm focusing on tools and techniques, but I did want to provide a bit of a, an overview of, of what we follow. So this, this flow, flow diagram will show you each step, uh, some of the key elements, and then I'll bring up uh, the, in terms of who's involved, the primary and secondary responsibility for each of the steps. So you know, this is a guideline that we've we've moved to. We've have found to be successful. So the first step in the process is the collection of all the demand data, uh, which is in our business, and this could come from existing commercial demand, uh, which can be you know internal and external. If you have one plant providing uh, product to another plant uh, to to move forward, then that's internal external demand. You'll have new to business demand, uh, product launch demand. And, and in our case, uh, what's important as well is research and development demand. Um, that, that uses, utilizes resources or equipment. So it's important to, to capture all of that demand up front. Um, you know, we need to understand the impact it'll have. And, and ultimately, it'll drive you to an accurate financial projection for the business. Uh, the second step in the process culminates the demand review meeting each month where the demand data is formally presented to the organization um, as an unconstrained forecast. So at this point, you know, even though you may not have the capacity available today, it's important to understand what the total demand is for the business. So you know, gaps to the budget or strategic plan, uh, sales plan are highlighted, 
and there's actions to mitigate uh, the risk. Third step in the process is the formal uh, supply review meeting with the conversion of the latest demand plan uh, into loading on available equipment, materials, and resources. Uh, recommendations to address gaps in meeting the demand uh, or the need to manage costs during periods of significant swings in demand are developed with finance to provide the latest financial projection for the organization. Uh, it's important, uh, the ability to develop various scenarios, you know, shift changes, continuous improvement projects to reduce costs, uh, which may ultimately improve productivity, are, are important or key to developing the path forward for operations. You know, the output is the recommended supply plan that we're looking to gain approval for at the executive SNOP. Um, along the side here, as I mentioned, are the, are the key responsibilities uh, in this process. The, the next step in the uh, monthly cycle is the pre-SNOP meeting. Um, you know, the pre-meeting is to resolve any imbalances that you have between demand and supply and, and gaining that alignment in terms of what that, what that recommendation is. Um, so really, uh, and ideally, this meeting here is, I'll call it a dry run for your ex executive meeting. So the more this can become the actual executive meeting, the, the stronger it is, right, and you're focused on the key things. So you know, early on, this this meeting was pulling all the data together, trying to come up with recommendations and for the executive meeting. But the earlier, you know, the the more you could do this in the meeting, you're having those discussions here, and, and bringing it forward. The final meeting in, uh, within the monthly cycle is the executive SNOP meeting. Uh, it's the formal approval of the latest company game plan. All recommendations are reviewed, and they're either endorsed or denied. Um, you know, I'll review. I'll review some of the learnings from my experience um, as part of the development of these key actions and recommendations. You know, I'll say there's a bit of an art to doing that. Um, you know, pulling out what's important uh, for the business, and it it does vary by business. And again, the responsibility for uh, each of these sessions is along the side. Again, I'm not going to go into much based on the time. I want to focus on some other areas. The next uh, piece I want to highlight are some of the best practices as demonstrated as part of the um, successful SNOP meeting, which is broken into three categories for people, process, and output. Um, I, I want to set the, uh, the foundation, if you, uh, if you will, of, of what's important and what you should be striving towards. Uh, from a people perspective, in the majority of cases, um, senior management support is critical to ensure that all the areas of the organization are aligned to the process and treat the requirements of the process as a priority. Um, resources need to be allocated to support the monthly cycle and time, frame, time frames for information must be met. Otherwise, the ability to make informed decisions will be lacking. Um, you know, for example, you can't have the, the SNOP uh, process being uh, led by, for example, the VP of supply chain without having the alignment of the CEO. Um, it, you know, it, it becomes a challenge where you're trying to, to make recommendations and, and have decisions if you don't have the full buy-in. You know, ideally, uh, the CEO is typically the chair of the executive meeting and, and therefore supported by him or her uh, is, is, is critical in that regard. You know, there needs to be cross-functional support in the SNOP process since, it, you know, in, in reality, because it does impact the financial, the sales, the production and inventory plans, it, it really touches all parts of the organization. So we do need to have that cross-functional involvement. You know, stakeholders and participants must be actively involved in the process um, versus, um, you know, they're just coming to the meeting because their boss told them to. You know, that you know, truly understanding the benefits of the SNOP process will gain uh, the support commitment uh, from, from them. So very, very important uh, that, you, that you have that. The next piece is that it needs to be part of a recognized uh, uh, SNOP cycle. So, you know, it needs to be, meetings should be scheduled a year in advance. You know, your typical, uh, I'll say, meeting uh, guidelines for a successful meeting are, are here, but uh, very important. They, they need to be, ideally, the meetings are scheduled uh, one year in advance. And the, uh, they need to be frequent enough to allow the company to adjust uh, as needed to meet business objectives. You know, I'll, co I'll cover the monthly SNOP meeting schedule uh, coming up in a few slides. You know, formal agendas are important for key outputs and outputs 
of each of the process meetings to stay on topic and uh, you know pre-meeting uh, discussions that need to be part of it or preparation is important uh, you can't go you can't come to the meeting and sure there's going to be discussion at these meetings but the the preparation or the alignment prior to the meeting will help push you towards a, a successful meeting there needs to be formal meeting minutes uh, that are taken and published and, and holding people accountable and I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit later uh, in the meeting on the importance of that you know and the the, the final piece here which is critical is the single uh, plan you know or one set of numbers that everyone is using as input into the uh, the plans the sales plan the financial plan the production plan and ultimately the inventory plan you know one one example I often share with others to reinforce how critical one set of numbers is is my first SNOP meeting you know back 15 years ago uh, the first item on the agenda was the latest sales revenue number for the organization and when the CEO reviewed the pre-read information, it was clear that the financial and production numbers were different from the sales numbers that they had. And they had applied their own, I'll, I'll say, discretion to the sales numbers based on questioning the sales number. The CEO basically came in, um, directed these three areas uh, to use the meeting time uh, to align to one set of numbers. You know, they basically took that entire day. The meeting started in the morning, so they took eight hours that day um, still didn't get it done, had to come back five hours the following day before they could align to one number and, and agree to it. Um, so in, in all, that first meeting was a 13-hour SNOP meeting, and we didn't even get off the first slide. You know, I think it was a very, very powerful message uh, that was sent, you know, because pulling out uh, senior VPs for a day and a half out of their schedule, uh, you know, was, was difficult, and I'm sure uh, made for challenging uh, for them, but you know, ultimately, it set the tone and, and provided the importance of one set of numbers. You know, from then on, it was clearly known that that how important that is. So, you know, one of those uh, memories of, of those meetings that I, I'll never forget, and, uh, and I know neither will the, uh, the people that were involved. Why? So, you know, in terms of the consensus meeting, um, just why it's important. You know. One of the most difficult challenges in the SNOP meeting, whether it's demand, supply, pre-SNOP, executive SNOP, or even any of the uh, the preparation meetings, is to gain alignment or consensus with everyone involved. You know, myself as a facilitator, there's there's conflicting objectives here that you have to deal with. So uh, that that's probably the most difficult, and and continues to be right. So you have to be uh, that that's what I has found is one of the greatest challenges. So, you know, the varying opinions um, as participants come from different areas, they, they have their own bias opinion to protect their own area, right? You think of the silo effect, they're trying to protect their own uh, area metrics and, and their objectives. You know, it, it must include all the areas impacted by the uh, decision. You know, there's nothing worse than having a debate at the executive meeting because one area was not involved. You know, there, therefore it's important to have all the uh, all the participants must uh, must attend the meetings, or if they can't, they need to send to a de uh, designate who has the appropriate authority to make the, assist, the decision. Um, you know, there will be various data points, in some cases, judgment. You know, an example may be anticipating how a new product launch may go, and you can compare to similar products, but marketing may feel that due to the significant uh, advertising campaign that they're, they're running, um, they want to have pre-built inventory. So the challenge here, right, gaining alignment is on what do you what to build in advance of the launch, which impacts sales, right? They want to make sure they can, you know, they can get the potential safe sales revenue. Um, they won't be able to without enough inventory. But then you got production on the other hand, who doesn't want to ramp up manufacturing for the pre-build, only to have to ramp it down if there's not enough inventory, if there's too much inventory later, right? And then finance, of course, in all of this is is coming to the table. They want to manage uh, cash flow, and pre-build pre inventory is uh, is tying up cash, right? Because we're not selling. So a, a good example, and we we you know one thing that we often um, spend time on, you know, what's what's the right amount for a new product, or what what safety stock should we carry, especially with our business from uh, in terms of pharmaceutical and a, a short shelf life. So it's uh, it's important for us to to look at that. Um, consensus on one set of numbers helps when scenarios are developed to address a gap in demand and, and supply. Uh, you know, the cross-functional approach allows other areas not directly impacted by the decision to provide an unbiased viewpoint. So, you know, what's interesting is we'll have, for example, the VP of HR um, 
will attend and, and have a different view, right? They're not tied to many of the things. Sure, they're looking at headcount, things like that, but it's an example of where they can come with an unbiased view and, and oftentimes provide a very good uh, opinion on, on that should be considered. You know, the accuracy of the forecasts and plans become more accurate when it is being tracked, and there are key learnings when a similar situation uh, to gain alignment services. Uh, you know, one of the critical elements during the process uh, is to document assumptions, and I, and I can't state that enough. It's very important that as you go through, and we, we always have in our, in our demand review, in our supply review, pre-SNOP, and executive meeting, there's, there's always slides that document the assumptions that were made. Um, so you can understand the criteria that the recommendation was developed upon, you know, and then you'll learn uh, later. You know, the assumptions should also be challenged to verify that they're correct. For example, the, the pre-build I was talking about, if the pre-build from production is based on um, standard output rates uh, for a, a particular product versus what production is actually demonstrating, then the assumption uh, is not going to be, may not be correct. Uh, protect, particularly with a new product without any history. Just in terms of roles and responsibilities, so um, you know, I'm not going to go into each of the meetings, but at a, at a high level in terms of the overall process, you know, we've clearly uh, and firmly defined each of the uh, these critical roles that I'm going to walk through in the corresponding responsibilities uh, that I'll list as part of the overall process. Um, like I said, I'm not going to go into much detail into this webinar. We'll be covering more detail um, if you are at the academy in uh, in August. The uh, ultimately the executive champion or sponsor, um, you know, the CEO or the president should be the chair of the SNOP meeting, uh, but there should also be an executive member, a VP that is the executive champion of, of or sponsor of the process. Um, it provides, uh, you know, in terms of the SNOP process owner or facilitator, um, someone to go to. Um, especially when there's gaps with other executive uh, members that need to be addressed. So they can be that, uh, that, that support mechanism, if you will. Um, in terms of, you know, I've seen this done different ways, but I've, in my role as director of supply chain, I've been the SNOP process owner. Um, so, and actually, in my personal objectives, I have defined uh, SNOP improvements uh, in there. You know, it may be, it may appear to be somewhat uh, subjective in terms of measuring success. You know, how do you know whether it was uh, improved or not? But there's a, there's actually a formal annual review. I'll sit down with the executive champion and the CEO uh, once a year. You know, we'll, we'll go through and talk about how, how is SNOP doing, and what can we do to, to improve it and, and strengthen the overall process and meetings. Um, I'll provide an example of, you know, how would you come up with these ideas or what the improvement would be. Uh, towards the end of the webinar, I'll actually touch on a, a tool that I've used to help pull that out. And, and by that, I'm not just, it's you know, not just the three of us. Sure, I want alignment with the CEO, the executive champion, and myself, but if you can pull that out of the, the people that are involved in the process or the stake, other stakeholders, um, you'll get their buy-in, right? So I'll, I'll talk about a tool that I've used that has been helpful in that regard. You know, the rest of these teams here, you know, the demand planning team or demand that leads up to demand review, supply planning team, pre-SNOP and executive SNOP, you know, they support each step of the process. Um, it's got to be clearly defined and ideally um, it's with permanent roles within the organization. Um, otherwise, there's a risk that the process will lose its momentum um, when temporary, or I'll say, project in individuals leave, um, leave that role or, or leave the organization. Um, we've... We've been, you know, over time, this is something that we've, uh, we've learned the hard way, um, you know, having set up a project to try and get this running, um, and then, okay, you give it to someone that's in a, a full-time role, but they don't have the bandwidth or the capacity. So um, as we, over time, um, all of the roles within SNOP are, are full-time roles. So you build that into their position description um, and have to allow the, the time needed for it, um, you know. In, really shows the true commitment to, to the process. Now I'm going to cover off the, uh, the schedule and the horizon that we used for our SNOP process. Um, it was definitely an evolution as we needed to find out what worked best for us and therefore you know, I'll provide some of the reasons that we moved to, this, uh, to these guidelines. So uh, first off, this is the, uh, the monthly SNOP grid uh, by week. Um, you know, it does need to be adjusted. I'm going to walk through the, each of the weeks, but 
it, de it really depends on where the business day of the start of the month falls, which which day of the week. If it falls on a Friday, you may have to adjust accordingly. So, you know, before we schedule these meetings a year in advance, we're, we're looking at each month and understanding, okay, is there is there a shutdown or or where uh, how do we can how do we consider that as part of our planning the meetings? Because it's important you want to get these meetings in people's calendars so they can plan around it and they can't say, you know, things will come up, uh, of course, but uh, as, as much as possible, we want to get them planned. So the first, uh, the first step in week one is to develop and finalize the unconstrained demand forecast. You know, this includes existing demand, new product demand, and uh, as I mentioned before, research and development demand. Um, you know, we've we've developed some unique methods to track and adjust uh, to all types of demand, and it and it really can uh, vary by company. Um, so at the end of towards the end of week one, for us typically, if if the week fell this if the month fell this way, uh, demand review would be towards the end of week one. Uh, in week two, you we move on to supply review. Uh, towards the end of week three would be your pre S N O P meeting. Uh, in week uh, Sorry, week two, and then week three. The middle of week three is where we have our executive SNOP meeting, uh, and then the final week of the month. You know, there's a couple things that happen here. There's data collection of the demand for the cycle of the next month, but there's also uh, executive follow-up for any items from the executive SNOP meeting. Um, you know, you may, for example, you may need additional information to endorse a recommendation, such as another scenario. Let did we consider this? You know, what's the financial impact? So you might need a few days after the meeting, and then a quick a quick follow up discussion to say, yeah, we're you know that's the direction we want to go. So allowing that that time there uh, is 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 critical for that. Um, you know, we we started this monthly cycle, and and really for us we had supply review in week two, pre SNOP in week three, and then the S executive SNOP meeting was actually in week four um, because we took so long to pull the data together, you know, we were learning and going through it. So to start the process, that's how it was rolled out. Uh, but as things, you know, as we became more, I'll say the inputs and outputs were more formally defined, um, with alignment and data collection became more automated, we were actually able to compress the SNOP cycle. Because then, you know, what the, the disadvantage of, of spreading it out over four weeks is that by the time you get to executive SNOP in week four, the data is, is almost three weeks old. So the closer you can move SNOP to the time you lock in your forecast, that the data is, I'll say, is, is fresh, right? It, it hasn't changed. From a, I'll say, a forecast horizon perspective, you know, our, our SNOP horizon was initially 12 months, but we've moved to an 18 month forecast horizon. Um, you know, we do recognize that the further out the horizon, that the more volatile the volumes will be. Uh, but the accuracy did improve over time, and the benefit of longer-term visibility forced us to think beyond the next three months. You know, we found us, uh, ourselves in this vicious circle of, you know, what sales going to be next month? What's going to be the month after? And and you got to pull away from that and recognize that that SNOP is longer longer term. So there, you know, if you look at our SNOP uh, horizon, uh, we're looking out at 18 months. You know, I would say a significant advantage um, also became evident as the budget for the following fiscal year was being reviewed uh, six, six months in advance, right? So if you have an 18-month horizon, you're already looking, your, your fiscal year 12 months is, is six months prior, you're starting to look at that, um, which, which helps you. It allows the adequate time to lock it down. Because we would, you know, you typically begin the budget process three to four months uh, before the start of the year anyways, and then the pressure is put on sales and supply chain, you know, to lock down the forecast and start to review it. Um, therefore, with an 18-month uh, horizon, uh, becomes part of the normal ongoing uh, SNOP process. So, you know, the planning for the budget, it's become more of a process versus an event, right, where you, everyone has to get together and work through things. So that's been a significant advantage uh, for us. The other thing uh, to keep in mind, which took some time to evolve uh, to for us, is that, you know, the 18-month horizon uh, has to consider all decisions that should be made Within the within the 18 months, so when you think about that, you know an example uh, with that is uh, capital expense. You know, we may have long lead times to procure and, and install uh, equipment, and therefore, justification for the recommendation needs to be supported by the demand for the business. So we have, you know, we have a longer term, you know, call it three to five year uh, sales plan 
um, and it, it is reviewed in the business as part of the business planning, strategic planning uh, forums that are in place. But a couple of times a year, we're, we're bringing this view into SNOP uh, so these types of items can be considered, right? And so operations and, and everyone has the opportunity to, to look at that. Um, so, for example, this equates to extending uh, the equipment capacity loading graphs, right? So instead of looking at the 18-month uh, view for capacity graphs for equipment loading, you know, for a couple times a year, we put it into month, uh, yearly uh, buckets. So it tells us if we have an upcoming uh, problem. You know, this has worked well for our organization, uh, but, um, but you need to have an efficient uh, SNOP uh, process in place. So, you know, because this, this could quickly turn into a four or five hour meeting. You know, for us, we're able to, it, it probably bumps up the meeting maybe 30 minutes. So it's, it's, it's a, like I said, it's evolved over time, but recognizing that decisions, any decisions that need to be made within 18 months uh, need to be addressed. So now uh, I'm going to spend some time covering the key outputs from the process meetings as part of forming the key actions and recommendations that will that'll surface up to the executive meeting. So um, I'm going to walk through, uh, walk through these. So the pre-SNOP meeting to me is a very, very critical meeting. I, I mentioned it before. It should be the dry run of the SNOP meeting. So you know, one of the key things you want to have is follow-up of any um, items outstanding from the prior month's executive SNOP meeting. Um, if something's not closed, then what is the commitment and, and the gap? You may also find that as you, you know, an action item out of the last executive SNOP meeting, um, the scope, you know, all of a sudden um, increased. So it may have created a new action. So what we do is we'll close that action. If it's number one, we create a 1A and say, okay, we need, we need additional time here. So going into the executive meeting, we can, we can provide that visibility. Um, you know, all key actions, recommendations from that have you know surfaced from demand and supply review are reviewed to gain alignment. And and we I, I mentioned key actions here as well as recommendations for decision, because you know key actions are important because they may they may lead to a recommendation next month. So tracking the commitment and completion of those key actions is is very important. And then finally, the as part of the pre-SNOP meeting, um, the executive meeting slide. Um, really the pre-lead. So for us, the first few slides, summary slides for the executive SNOP meeting um, summarizes all the key actions and recommendations for this cycle. Um, this has been our practice and it works well. So right up front in the SNOP uh, deck, if you will, or a presentation um, is where the focus is. So we're saying right up front, this is what, what needs to be talked about or, or a decision made. That way you cover everything off. You know, as part of the um, SNO, pre-SNOP meeting, you know, there's examples of items, and I'm just going to walk through a few examples here uh, that should be considered as part of gaining alignment on the recommended uh, plan. You know, production planning methods. You know, are we are we looking to change that, which may have an impact on headcount or or raw material purchasing or, and, and ultimately your inventory and cash flow. Um, product family volume decisions is another example that needs to be evaluated. Uh, inventory or backlog and customer service trade-offs, right? A good example for us is, you know, we have a customer contract in place. Um, if the retail may may dictate that you need 99% customer service, or you'll be faced with fines or or potentially the loss of the business. Where you're, if you're the primary supplier uh, for this product, and there's a secondary supplier, um, it may state that you need to achieve a certain customer service, but with that comes the offset of the inventory that you may need to keep to, to hit that customer service. So having, you know, being transparent about that invisibility is important. Um, you know, this, this for us is a challenge with the product life, uh, product shelf life. You know, differences in internal priorities, right? I talked about it, sales versus inventory versus pr production efficiency versus cost. Um, you know, the evaluating all of that and, and understanding the, the impact. And then, you know, the one of the key things for us is in terms of new product uh, introductions. So we do spend the time to track uh, new products uh, status and, and the impact of a delay to launch, you know, because if the organization's planning for it, you know, there's all of a sudden a change or a delay, um, you need to understand uh, what that'll mean to the organization. With all of those that I, uh, you know, the plans that I just talked about and, and gave some examples of things that need to be considered, uh, ideally, you have the ability to sh uh, show the financial what-ifs, uh, you know, which may help 
uh, drive to a recommendation for various uh, plan options. You know, an example is the impact of, of overtime or additional shifts, which will increase costs versus the bottom line impact for the net income of, of that additional revenue. So, you know, assessing, I talked about the customer service and inventory effects, you know, comparing your uh, different profit scenarios. Uh, the impact of the bottom line in cash flow is important. And then ultimately, you want to gain alignment on the appropriate scenarios for executive SNOP. So we, we've really, this, this is one area I would, you know, I, we've really grown in terms of our ability to um, drive to gain alignment because ultimately there's going to be a financial projection uh, with the recommended, recommended plan that's, that's put forward. So if you have that ability and your financial finance team is on board, you know, for example, we have our, our controller uh, will attend uh, all of the meetings, the demand review, supply review, pre-SNOP with the B, uh, VP of finance at pre-SNOP. So we're working these scenarios and we understand the financial impact uh, because, you know, yet you do have to grow the business, but there is also the, the financial side that needs to be considered. So your ability to do this financial what-if uh, scenarios um, will really help you in terms of evaluating what uh, what the recommended recommended uh, plan is for the business. The uh, in terms of the executive SNOP meeting, so really uh, just just taking a few minutes to pull out the key things. Right, what you want here at the executive SNOP meeting is endorsement of the key actions and recommendations that have come up from the pre SNOP. Um, all the supporting data should be in backup slides for reference. You know, you're not going to walk through them, but if, you know, ideally the pre-read is available for the executive SNOP uh, 48 hours before the meeting so that all of the participants have the opportunity to actually go through uh, that data and, and, you know, hopefully answer their own questions, but if not, then you can pull it up and, and walk through it. Um, escalation of any items that could not be resolved at pre-SNOP for final decision. You know, Hopefully, this is uh, a minimum number of items that, that you know, you just can't get alignment between if it's sales and operations or even finance, uh, these areas, it'll be escalated. Um, if, if you're not, you know, if this is ha occurring on a regular basis, then I don't think the, the, the pre-SNOP uh, meeting and that team uh, needs to be uh, working a, a different method or, you know, it should be a minimum. And then the, you know, the key is the feedback mechanism to other parts of the organization uh, to the aligned plan. You know, for example, the latest uh, agreed upon forecast uh, needs to be uploaded in the system, right, to provide uh, visibility on the requirements for the company, whether that's materials, equipment, uh, or whatnot. You know, ultimately, companies need to focus on uh, both the uh, sales and operations components of SNOP. Um, it's easy for an organization to only focus on one area when it's constraining the business um, and not meeting the business or strategic objectives. You know, we, uh, there's not enough sales. We need more sales or we need more capacity. But uh, you always need to focus on both components, particularly when the SNOP horizon um, is within that 12 to 18 months. Because if, you know, if, for example, there is a gap in capacity, well, maybe you're going to buy more equipment or hire more people. So you'll close that gap. So you need to think beyond that. You know, actions in place to address the gap, but but think beyond. So we, you know, and I'll be honest, we we fall into that trap, right? We we need more sales. We need more revenue. So the majority of the discussion is leaning towards sales. But you know, I always try and balance that time to make sure we're we're providing the adequate time for the the, the focus on both. You know, we've made significant changes to our process over the past 15 years, and the monthly process has evolved. Uh, you know, I would say from reporting on the state of the business, you know, comparing actual results to budget, you know, verifying that operations can support uh, the latest sales plan, plan uh, really to bringing forward recommendations for a decision that will change uh, the projected outcome, both strategically and financially. You know, you, you really need to understand uh, what questions you're attempting to answer. Um, and ultimately, you want to gain the maximum benefit, you know, of the 90 minutes that you're going to spend each month with the key decision makers within the business. So you need to take advantage of, of that time. Moving on here, uh, I'm going to now uh, move to the meetings themselves and, and how to make them more, uh, more effective. So just some of the key, uh, the key learnings and from a sustainability uh, perspective. You know, there's standard things uh, you need to, to have in place. I, I talked about 
the uh, booking the meetings one year advance. You know, if they need to move out a day or two, that's fine, but they, they, they shouldn't be canceled. Um, and, the, and the timelines for inputs and outputs um, should stay the same because you want the process to keep moving forward. So you may move the meeting by the day, by a day, but, but inputs and outputs have to, to stay, on, uh, stay on track. You know, having formal documented processes um, as it's reviewed today, it helps to review them, uh, you know, I'd say every, at least every 12 to 24 months um, on, on what you're doing and, is, and having it formally documented is important. Uh, I talked about the formal published meeting minutes and then a mechanism in which the output decisions from the SNOP meeting is commun communicated um, to the other stakeholders in the organization. You know, this avoids a gap in senior management not providing direction on the priorities to the other parts of the organization. So that feedback mechanism is important. Um, a meeting scorecard, you know, for the process is a good tool that I've used um, and I'll, I'll walk you through uh, what, I've, what I've put in place and has worked well. And again, I've pulled it in and out as, I, I, as I've needed to. Um, continuous improvement, right? Um, and I talked about that in terms of the objectives that I have. Um, it's not only good for the manufacturing environment, right, in terms of CI initiatives, but it can be implemented in the SNOP meetings. Um, in the form of a critique form, um, and I'll, I'll walk you through that, uh, that tool that I've used as well. So, you know, measuring the, uh, the SNOP process, you know, as with any other critical key performance indicator uh, in our organization, it's important to understand where we are and where we need to be. Uh, then we have to measure and gain an understanding of the current state to develop the baseline and establish the, re the required level of improvement. So, you know, some questions uh, that come to mind as part of measuring the process. You know, is there a commitment to the process by all participants and stakeholders? You know, are they just going along for the ride or are they actually in, engaged in the process? You know, is the appropriate dis discipline in place um, uh, to avoid continuous uh, reminders from the facilitator? You know, I know in the past, uh, being open, I've had to follow up with, uh, with uh, some participants to verify that they've completed their inf information as part of the inputs into the process. You know, and part of that was I didn't want myself to look bad, right, being open about it. But you can't always continue to do that. So this is where I came to the, uh, the, the meeting scorecard, um, and it kind of took that away from it, you know, put the onus on, on them. Is there a measurement in place to drive and measure improvement in the SNOP? You know, ideally there's tools in place that can help the facilitator improve the, the SNOP process and gain the maximum benefit out of the monthly meeting. And do all participants believe there is value in the SNOP process? If not, what are the ways to increase their, their passion to get involved? You know, you can gauge whether someone's actually involved in the SNOP process and using it to their benefit or, or um, you know, are they, are they just coasting along? So um, if once they, they do that, and one, one example I'll give is with a, you know, I remember a, uh, a sales VP, a new sales VP that came on board with our company, you know, said just I don't, you know, I don't understand the benefit here. Well, one one good example was they they tried to get something approved. Um, they were looking to get some safety stock uh, in place for a product for a, something coming up, and they they had individual meetings with, you know, first it was production, then it was finance, then it was, and this was several meetings that took a period of, you know, I would say three months. So then, actually following the SNOP process done right, they had all the stakeholders at the table. And I, I was actually able to get the VP on board. I helped them to, you know, to, to kind of guide them in terms of, okay, let's, let's document everything at domain review, bring it through supply review, pre-SNOP, and ultimately the decision was made at executive SNOP a few weeks later. So from that point forward, I was able to get that VP on board. They, they, they now understood, okay, you know, this is actually a, the, a great forum uh, to get things that I'm recommending uh, approved. So that was a good example of where I was able to, uh, to do that. You know, tools to measure the, the SNOP process. Um, you know, ideally from a discipline uh, uh, and commitment perspective, uh, the scorecard that I'm going to walk you through, you know, we track, track attendance, uh, completion on inputs, uh, you know, the inputs that I talked about for slides and information, and then completion of even uh, previous uh, meeting minutes. You know, and you got to be careful here, right, and, and not make it personal versus not making, I'll say, a, a bad career move when you call someone out uh, because of that. So, you know, the, the key here is transparency and having the discussion with the group ahead of time. So if you're going to implement this at demand review, look, everyone, this is, 
the tool we're implementing, and this is why. Um, so you know it's important that you're you're open about uh, why you're doing this. So here's a sample scorecard um, that that I've used. So in essence, you have here, you know, if this was in domain review, it, you'd have each of the participants' names here. Um, you know, if they had uh, action items from meeting uh, previous meeting minutes, were they completed on time? You know, the inputs of information for this cycle, is it is it on time? If you set the limit of two days before the meeting, right, be, be clear around the expectations. And then the attendance, right, if someone's showing up uh, 15 minutes late or they don't show up at all, um, did, they, did they attend or did they send someone with the appropriate uh, authority to, to go? You know, and, and basically it's, it's red or green, right? So did each participant, and if, if it's NA, then you can put NA or put, you know, it's green because they didn't have to, but I can tell you it, it can be an effective uh, tool uh, to track compliance to the SNOP process. And, and in the end, no one likes to be red. Um, you know, you put your name up there and you have a red box beside it. Um, it's, you know, you're not, it's not going to, uh, no one likes to see that. Um, you know, what, what you then do is you have this for demand review, for supply review, and for pre-SNOP, and all of these um, participants roll up to the VP of that area, um, and then it's uh, presented at the SNOP meeting. So I talked about the recommendations to implement. You know, you want to gain support and review the scorecard with the chair of whichever meeting that you're, you're um, going to implement um, and at first you're going to you're going to get mechanical what I'll call mechanical compliance they're they're doing it just because they have to they don't want to be read but hopefully you're able to move them towards the right behavior um, to meet the requirements um, you know what you do is like again I talked about the the importance of talking uh, with the group and then initially when I did implement this I'll you know in place but then you got to quickly move to, to uh, to a place where you're not reminding. And, and what I found is that I implemented this, you know, maybe it took three or four months, and then I could pull it away. And if it becomes a problem again, I pull it back out and say, okay, look, I noticed there's a problem with attendance or getting information in on time, so we're gonna, we're gonna pull this out. Um, the other piece I wanna highlight here is that, um, so what you would have at the executive SNOP is you would have each of the VPs. So you'd have the VP of sales and all of their participants from all of the meetings would have their results. So if one person didn't attend one of the meetings they needed to, or pre-SNOP, then they would be read. So and what you want to do with me as the facilitator of the executive SNOP meeting, I have that discussion with the VP prior to the meeting. So they, they know in advance. And you know, fortunately what, what tends to happen is I put this scorecard up at the, you know, it's one of the first things we look at at SNOP. Right, the SNOP process and, and how we're doing, the VP, I don't have to say a word, the VP says, I understand there's a gap and I'll take care of it. And that's all that needs to be said. If nothing's said, then the CEO will just, you know, I've, I've seen it happen, the CEO asks, you know, is there a problem here and that we need to address? And so it's a, it's a very good way as a facilitator to, to provide a hands-off way. But, but again, I have to stress, you have to be open around the expectations. Uh, in terms of the five, sorry to interrupt, Todd. We have about problem. seven minutes left for the webinar um, and Q and A. Just FYI. Okay, thank you. You can leave at least, at least five minutes. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to walk through um, here the stakeholder alignment and value. So I, I'd mentioned it before. So continuous improvement in the SNOP uh, process is is very important, right? And you want to understand the current uh, state of the. Uh, process and, and the feedback mechanism. So I've used, and I'm going to I'll walk you through uh, quickly here, a critique form um, in the SNOP process, and it's a valuable tool um, that, you know, for the facilitator to use. And, you know, this this allows you, um, I talked about it earlier in terms of the feedback from the participants themselves. You know, it not only to uh, get the value of SNOP, but to help them meet uh, both organizational and personal objectives. So here's an example, and I'm gonna I'm gonna you know roll through um, here just so you might want to measure the performance uh, metrics. Are they available, uh, well understood, um, available in time? Um, another element of the critique form might be business plans, right? They're documented, have risks identified. So what you do basically, and I'm gonna jump forward here. There's there's different examples, and I know you'll be able to get these slides um, if you fill out the survey. But there's different elements. Um, there's even a piece around the meeting facilitation. 
So I'm going to jump. And what you do, and this is, again, a bit subjective, but it gives you a good foundation. So have each individual score it. You know, is it bad, poor, getting better, good, or excellent? So here's an example of a completed scorecard, right? So the metrics, so we, you average all the scores. So here we had a score of 3.4. Um, you know, hopefully you're getting feedback uh, from the participants, you know, good work on metrics, but the required plan for, for backup. You know, you want to encourage them to note uh, uh, comments. And it's important as a facilitator, uh, you want to filter the comments or maybe seek clarity. So if they're being, you know, somewhat personal about someone, you want to, you want to pull that out. Um, another example around meeting facilitation. So, you know, you got to take, I want to hear the feedback on, on how I'm facilitating the process. The um, adapting to change, you know, I think the key thing here that I'm going to talk about is when, when a new VP comes on board or, or someone new to the process, training and education is important. So within the first week that a VP starts with the organization, I meet with them to go through the, the SNOP process. So, you know, I think that training and education is very important. And I gave you the example earlier how you get the value or the buy-in. And I think if others in the organization know that the SNOP process is the forum to, to have decisions made, then, then they'll recognize that. So I'm going to, I kind of went through that last section there, but hopefully uh, it'll, it'll provide the, that's the tool that we used. So I'll, uh, at this point, I do want to provide, a, leave a little bit of time. So I thank you and I'll, I'll open it up for, for questions. Todd, that was brilliant, um, just uh, you sharing and simplifying the SNOP process for everybody and talking about your cadence and how you improve it on a yearly ba basis. Th thank you very much. Y you know, as the, the questions were coming in, and as they were coming in, you began to answer them uh, in your presentation. Particularly, there's a lot of questions on how to get C-level uh, participation, so it still continues to be a, a struggle. But one question that also has, or a couple of questions that have come in are related to the role of finance. Is the, does your SNOP forecast drive financial targets or is it vice versa? If you can share some best practices there or worst practices or pitfalls to avoid uh, in, in that respect. So for us, each, uh, each month we have the, I mentioned that, you know, in terms of the demand review, you have the unconstrained uh, sales forecast. Um, and, and everyone gets visibility of that. So, you know, I'm going to talk a lot more about this at the academy, but you, you, have the, uh, you have the different parts of the organization that actually attend for information purposes. So finance is involved in that meeting. And then when you get to the point where you go through supply review, you're now, you, you get to that point to, okay, what can we deliver as an organization and what have we demonstrated? So again, finance is, is in there. So then they're able to take that I'll say game plan that we've developed that we can meet and everyone's aligned to and turn that into our financial projections. With that, I mentioned that you have the financial scenarios um, and we do a lot with that. We really do. Um, we, we have the ability to show, okay, if we do this, what's the impact of the bottom line? And, and you know, we're fortunate. It took a long time, but we have finances engaged because they're ultimately wanting to improve that net income number each month. So we, we definitely take it and drive it through that way and then the, the latest plan turns into our financial projection. Great. Getting a lot of questions on technology uh, and so software tools. Do you need software for for SNOP? Can you talk to um, you know what applications you're you're using and visualization uh, applications as, as as well? There's some questions on that. We uh, we do have a forecasting tool that helps us with the data collection. Um, there's there's any of them out there. So without, you know, I'm not going to mention names. You can do the research yourself, but you know that helps to automate the process to pull that together. Um, similarly, we've developed our own internal tools. You know, we we did have a system that provided capacity loading, but when it came to doing this scenario uh, planning, we we developed our own internal tools that give us that from a supply perspective or operations perspective. That I'll say that what if, you know, what if we do this or or change this? So we we developed that over over time. Uh, but I, but I do want to. What I do want to highlight is that what's most important in this is get the process right. You know, you can you can automate and develop later, but you got to start. You know, if you can get the process working, then what you'll have then is the buy-in and the motivation to automate. Because if you're trying to automate first and then get to a process that works, I found it. You know, it works better the other way to to get people bought in because then you get you know it's that flywheel effect, right? You get more and more people involved that want to want to get engaged and be involved in the SNOP process. 
excellent. Uh, this is more related to a manpower or women power question. Todd, you being a director of supply chain, uh, having that responsibility, what percentage of your time is spent on SNOP versus sourcing, inventory management, lean programs, et cetera, since you're facilitating the SNOP process? I'm going to estimate that probably 10 to 15 percent of my time is, is uh, dedicated to SNOP. And, and that goes right from, you know, I attend the demand review meetings, I attend the supply review meeting, and then I facilitate the other meetings. And there's the pre-discussions. So, I, you know, I'm not involved in the, you know, the data collection, the, the, the graphs. My, my supply chain manager um, will put together the graphs and then we'll, we'll have a pre-meeting to go through them and I'll pull in the operations executives. But that's, that's probably a good estimate in terms of, and, and to me, I get it. I know that this is important. So, you know, that's why it's a, it's a, it's a good part of my time. Excellent. Well, folks, I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to get through all the questions, but Todd is going to be in Las Vegas on August 15th and 16th. Uh, to have a deeper dive with any of you. I, we hope to possibly meet many of you at, at, at the Academy. Of course, there will be future SNOP webinars. For, look for that. There's been a lot of questions on getting cross-functional cross participation, particularly sales and marketing. We have many articles and blogs. Check out demand-planning.com. There, there are some great blog stories on how to engage uh, different parts of the organization for SNOP. Uh, but again, look for our upcoming programs. We'll be also in Orlando with our leadership, business planning, and forecasting, uh, an SNOP program where we have top-level VPs that are sharing their pers perspective uh, on a strategic level, uh, how to get the most uh, out of these processes and engage the organization um, in them as, as, as well. We thank all of you for, for calling in and taking time out for today's webinar. And we look forward to meet, possibly meeting or seeing you at an upcoming IBF program. And finally, the slides will be given if you indicate your interest in the survey that you'll be receiving in about an hour. So please share your feedback and then indicate your interest there uh, on the material for this program. Thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you or having you at an upcoming IBF program. Thank you very much. Thanks again, Todd. Thank you.